Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favourite sequels. Um, not of all time, this video is mainly just focusing on some classic, well some classic types of movies that have had sequels, but I just prefer the sequel over the original in some cases, but this isn't the list where you are going to, you're going to see Empire Strikes Back or Aliens, Terminator 2, Godfather 2. That's for a completely different list altogether. These are just some sequels that I think deserve a bit more praise, shall I say. Um, but I enjoy them more than the originals. Um, that's definitely for sure. Not to say that any of the originals are bad at all. It's just my opinion. These follow-ups, I think, are pretty decent. Um, and yeah. I enjoy them maybe a tad bit more than the originals. Uh, as I go through the list, I'll give my justifications as to why I like them more than the originals. Um, so, yeah, like I said, these aren't, you know, world-changing, game-changing sequels at all. Um, these are just some sequels that I just really, really enjoy and have a good time. And when I watch the franchises that they're in, I look forward to coming up to these sequels I just have a great time with them. Um, so yeah, kicking it off with my first pick. It is Hot Shots Part 2. Um, yeah, massively enjoy this one, leaps and bounds over the first one. Um, these are two really good spoof movies, I think from the early 90s. Um, the first one obviously spoofs Top Gun. Top Gun, I'm sorry, it's not a film I'm a massive fan of. I think it's good for what it is. I think the soundtrack's better than the movie. Um, but yeah, Hot Shots spoofs it very well. Hot Shots Part 2 is more of an, a spoof of an action movie. Like, um, pretty much taking the praise from First Blood Part 2. Um, and I loved it. Um, I just love it a hell of a lot more. It's a lot more funny. It just speaks to me with the genre that it tackles. Comedy and action. Really, really good fun. Really, really enjoy Part 2 miles more than the first one if i'm honest i'm not saying the first one's bad but i just have a lot lot more fun with part two uh yeah i just think it's really really good and it just spoofs the action movies i love that i grew up with just really really good fun with the second one yeah but yeah not great movies but two competent movies um and just get a lot more enjoyment out of the sequel so yeah hot shots part two next up we've got another stakeout now i enjoy like the hot shots movies i enjoy both these movies i have a great time with them um the first one i think richard dreyfus and emilio estevez have great chemistry um but what i really like about the second one is it recaptures that chemistry as well but it throws rosie o'donnell in there as well and i just think the three of them recapture that chemistry and recapture that magic with you know, the presence of Rosie O'Donnell, it just works so well, and I just have a lot more fun with it. Um, yeah, not perfect movies, but really, really good fun, and really, really entertaining. Um, but yeah, far from perfect, but they absolutely deliver for me, and yeah, I have a really, really good time with them. So yeah, another stakeout, enjoy it just a tad bit more than the original. Um, but yeah, if you've not seen these movies, Check them out. I recommend them. So, yeah, Hot Shots, number 10. Number 9, another stakeout. So, okay. So, coming in at number 8 for me, might be a little bit of a controversial one. Um, Under Siege 2. Um, yeah, I think why I enjoy the sequel more than the original is because of the setting. First one is on this boat. It's, it's great. It's fine for what it is. Tommy Lee Jones, Gary Busey, fantastic villains. Um, but I just enjoy the sequel a hell of a lot more with the setting on the train. Everett McGill and Eric Bogosian make great villains. Um, with Everett McGill being the muscle and Eric Bogosian being the brains. Absolutely fantastic. Great seeing Steven Seagal going up against the two. You know, Steven Seagal's not the best actor in the world. But I think these two movies really do suit his capabilities. Um, and yeah, the Under Siege movies are probably the best Steven Seagal action movies, in my opinion, that I really, really enjoy. Um, 
But yeah, I really, really love the aesthetics of the sequel, and I just have a better time with it um, than the than the first one. Um, but yeah, Under Siege Two, really, really enjoy it um, for what it is. Um, so yeah, that's my number eight pick. Coming up next at number seven, I'm going with Father of the Bride Part Two. Um, I enjoyed. Both of these movies, um, for for the longest time, these were really the only sort of Steve Martin movies that I had ever seen. Um, but I think these have got a great cast um, with Diane Keaton as well. Martin Short, um, absolutely hysterical. Used to make me piss my pants as a kid watching him. Just thought he was really, really funny in these two movies. I think he's especially funny in the sequel. Um, the sequel to me does not feel like a rehash of the first one. Um, all the characters come back, all the actors come back, and it's a lot more fun. Um, I think well, it, it tackles more of a, of a pregnancy storyline than a wedding storyline. But, yeah, I just really, really enjoy it. And I think if Father of the Bride was going to get a sequel, I think the second one was the best direction to go in um, with where it goes. But, yeah, I just really, really enjoy part two a hell of a lot more than part one. Um, I just find it a lot more entertaining. Um, so yeah, um, pick number seven was Father of the Bride Part 2. Coming up next to me at number six is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Um, this kind of makes the list out of default because I do not like uh, Curse of the Black Pearl. Um, it is not a movie I enjoy. Um, the second one, however, I have such a massive appreciation for this one. Um, it's re just really funny like that. I just, I love the whole Davy Jones aspect to it. The His design, I think, is absolutely fantastic. The design of his crew is really, really creative and really, really, you know, it's the, the fun to look at. They're sort of like half human, half sea creature hybrids. And they just they just look great, in my opinion. And it is just it's so much fun. This sort of feels like Pirates meets Indiana Jones. Um really, really good effects, really good set pieces in this movie. And I just have so much more fun with it. Where the first one bored me, this one did not. I just had an absolute blast with Dead Man's Chest. I think it's the best Pirates movie we've got. That's just my opinion. But, yeah, really, really enjoyed Dead Man's Chest. Um, I just actually sort of cared a bit more about the characters. You know, um, they're all fighting over Davy Jones' heart at the end. It's just massively entertaining. And, yeah, I just think it's leaps and bounds better than um, Curse of the Black Pearl. So, yeah, that was my next pick, Dead Man's Chest. Coming in at number five for me is a Disney movie. And for the longest time, I think this was the only Disney sequel that um, we had that's part of the classics. Uh, and that is Rescuers Down Under. Um, yeah, leaps and bounds better than the um, the original, in in my opinion. Um, I rewatched these movies quite recently. The original is a struggle to get through, if I'm honest. Um, very very plays it very safe it's very cutesy the animation's fine for it is but when you're comparing it with rescuers down under this is leaps and bounds more creative um the scenes with the eagle in this are absolutely stunning it's absolutely breathtaking to watch you know it, it could play things very very safely and very boring very interesting but this goes full on 11 out of 10 out, out of out of the blows you out of the water with its stunning imagery. It really is fantastic. The opening shot with the the zoom is great. Uh, the music in it's fantastic. Um, Storyline is a little bit weak, a little bit predictable. Um, particularly the stuff going on between Bernard and Bianca, where he's, he's trying to pop the question, and this other character starts to get in the way. Um, that gets a little bit tedious, but the animation. On whole, fantastic. Absolutely love Rescuers Down Under. Um, I just think it's a hell of a lot better than the original. Um, I still like the original, 
but it's just my head drops whenever I'm doing a sort of Disney marathon and I, I get to the, the original rescuers. It's, you know, it's, it's just not, it's not good in terms of Disney. Um, but it's not a, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but yeah, rescuers down under so much more better in my opinion. So yeah, that was my number five pick. Going in at number four for me, Paddington two. Um, I really liked the the first one. I thought it was good. I didn't. It didn't blow me away. Um, and then when sort of Paddington two got announced, I was like, mm, okay, it's gonna not be as good. It's just gonna be like a sort of solid five, six out of ten average sequel. Um, I couldn't have been more wrong. This was so much more better and interesting. Um to me with the direction it took Hugh Grant as the villain where did he get this from absolutely fantastic um he sort of frames Paddington and you know the scenes where Paddington's in jail are just so funny and riveting I have just such a good time with Paddington too and think it's really really good um one of the most underrated sequels in my in my opinion I just have such a good time um with Paddington too really really good i can't say much more than that, than that it just introduced a new character that brought a lot of humor to it and was a great villain and yeah it led for a very very competent sequel uh in my opinion and a better movie than the original in even though i still like the first paddington just think the sequel's a lot better so yeah that was my next pick paddington 2 next movie on my list is i've got my old vhs for a double pack for these two movies and i'm seeing a lot more love for this movie in recent times um a lot more people do actually prefer this movie to the original and that is gremlins 2 um yeah i think the first one sets up the premise and the concept really really well um you know, there's this creature, a mogwai, and there are these rules. Don't get him wet, don't feed him after midnight, and don't expose him to sunlight. And all three rules get broken. And the way it executes that concept and it executes those consequences is perfect. It does it wonderfully, um, and the movie wraps up very, very nicely. Now, what the sequel does, in my opinion, which improves on that, it, it gets a hell of a lot more creative with what you can do you know it could have been a very much a rehash and it just doesn't go that way um when the mog when gizmo gets wet and he multiplies the mogwais aren't like stock puppets of gizmo they actually have their own unique characteristics the way they look is different their colors are different their expressions are different for the first one um the way what the gremlins are doing what the gremlins get up to in this in the sequel is a lot more fun sort of the, the potion chemical hybrids that we get are absolutely creative and wonderful it's the movie itself on the whole when you look at it it's batshit insanity with the way it goes even more so than the first one but i really really admire the second one for taking that direction and really having fun with it and taking it to that next level um of batchet insanity and i just think it's wonderful it's the one out of the two movies it's the one i rewatched the most as a kid because of how colorful and bright it is and it just has fun with it it's got a great color palette to it this movie really really good just really love gremlins too not taken away from gremlins at all it sets it up wonderfully but gremlins too just has a lot more fun with the concept and takes it to very very creative places in my opinion um so yeah that's why i just prefer it a little bit more than the original still love the original i can very easily watch these two movies back to back um but yeah really really do have a massive massive good time with gremlins 2 so yeah that was my third pick so going up next at number two for me is Adam's Family Values. Um, now, the problem I have with the first Adam's Family movie is, to me, this movie feels like a sequel 
to another movie we never got. It feels like the secondary story to a a first film that just doesn't exist. Um, to me, that's that's the vibe I get from this movie. It it doesn't really set the family up. It just goes straight in with this storyline of Uncle Fester's gone missing. Um, and yeah, they're trying to take the Adams family fortune. Yeah, it's it doesn't feel like it sets it up very well. I still like it for what it is. I still have a good time with it. Um, but Adam's Family Values is so much more enjoyable. I mean, my my God, Joan Cusack as the villain, great. Um, absolutely love her in this movie. Just think she is fantastic. I love the camp, the camp that the kids get dumped off at. Peter McNichol, absolutely hysterical in this movie. I just love the the setting of it. It's it's so great where this this woman who's actually this psychopath works away in to the Adams family, marries Uncle Fester and tries to steal the fortune. It is so much more fun than the original. I just love the sequel so much. Just absolutely love it. Um again, it's the one I watched the most when I was a kid. And I just have an absolute wonderful time with it. I love the humour in these two movies as well. Really, really is something that I resonate with quite a lot. Um just have a great time with it. I just love how dark it is. Like even as an adult now, there's a lot of jokes went over my head as a kid. I really sort of picked up on more um in these movies. Some of them are actually quite risque, shall we say? But yeah, Adam's Family Values, I think is the better movie and it's the one I have them much more fun with. Uh, I just think it's a fantastic sequel. And again, you can probably watch these two movies back to back and have a really, really good time with them. Um, yeah, just absolutely love these two movies, particularly the second one. Just have a hell of a lot more fun with it. And yeah, just find it m more entertaining. So yeah, that is my number two pick, Adam's Family Values. So coming in at number one for me, Is Wayne's World 2. I love both these movies. Don't get me wrong. I think they're absolutely fantastic. They both um, are great companions to each other. And I have an absolutely fantastic time with both movies. Now, the reason why I give the edge to Wayne's World 2 is because I grew up with Wayne's World 2 um, more than the first one. Wayne's World 2 was the first one I actually saw. Um, and it was a movie I rewatched a hell of a lot growing up. I just absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. Loved, loved the setting. I had no idea what the first one was about uh, up until later on. But I just find the humour in it works a hell of a lot more. Um, the scene uh, where Wayne meets uh, Cassandra's father and it's all dubbed and it leads to this absolutely insane fight sequence. I love it. It's hysterical. Um the whole weird naked Indian stuff is absolutely great. The roadie as well, wonderful. You know, I just absolutely love Wayne's World too. I'm not taking anything away from the first one. The first, the first one, in my opinion, is the better movie, but the sequel is the one I absolutely have a hell of a lot more fun with. Um, just absolutely love it. You know, with the first one, you've got Rob Lowe kind of as the villain. Sequel, you've got Christopher Walken, you know. On paper, who you're going to have more fun with as the villain, in my opinion, you know, it's Christopher Walken. No disrespect to Rob Lowe whatsoever, but Christopher Walken, I think, makes for a much more appealing villain, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I have an absolute blast with Wayne's World 2. Um, yeah, it's just one of my favourite comedies of all time, along with the first one. You know, there isn't there isn't much in this at all between the two movies. I absolutely love both of them. Um, absolutely have fantastic. I won't watch one without the other. Um, and I just have an absolute wonderful time with them. Um, but yeah, like I said, the sequel, it just has so much more fun moments in it for me. The the whole YMCA sequence, I thought was, was hysterical when I was a kid. They accidentally walk into this gay bar to try and hide from Christopher Walken and they end up doing the YMCA. Yeah, it's um, it's just 
a lot more entertaining in that sequence. And the whole ending sequence where it took from The Graduate. I hadn't even seen The Graduate. And I just still found it hysterical. Um, the way it goes, yeah. It's just, it's a really, really good sequel in my opinion. Um, and it rivals the first one. I just really, really do enjoy these two movies, especially the sequel. So yeah, that was my number one pick for Wayne's World 2. So yeah. Those are my top 10 sort of sequels that I prefer over the original. Not great movies, not game-changing movies, but I think they're really good, solid, competent films. That I certainly get a lot of enjoyment from. Um, you know, maybe one day I'll do my top 10 favourite sequels of all time. Maybe some of those will end up on that list. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot more sequels out there that are game-changing shall we say, like Terminator, Aliens, Godfather 2, Empire Strikes Back, those types of movies. But yeah, these for me are sequels that still hold up and rival the, or the original. And in this case, I prefer over the original. So yeah, um, I'm going to leave the video there and say thanks very much for watching. Stay safe. Let me know some of your preferred sequels down below in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.